Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on one of the easiest and quickest baby quilts that you'll ever see. And it actually turns out so nice. I've seen it done um, so many times by some of my students um, and I've done quite a few of them as well um, for quilts that I've sold at craft shows or orders and things like that. Um, it's nice because it showcases large prints um, and smaller prints also don't look too lost in this pattern and you can also use cotton or flannel um, and you have a little bit of flexibility with how many prints you want to use as well so mine's actually going to be for a baby shower gift that's coming up um, so I thought just before I started to sew it together I've already cut it um, but I just thought I haven't filmed this before so I thought that I would share it with you so what I always recommend is to for this quilt, um, it's going to be done in strips. Um, what I'll probably do is insert a picture of it at the beginning of the video so that you can see what it looks like before you start. So basically this print um, is going to be my featured print. So when you're choosing your fabrics or maybe you already have a busy or a larger scale print in mind um, for something that you want to do. So for me, this is my large scale print. And what I've done is I have three pieces um, of the width of the fabric. So like 41 or 42 long. And these are seven and a half inches wide. And I have three of those. Also, all of my fabrics that I'm going to be using today are flannel in case you're wondering. So after you choose your main print, you're then going to choose two supporting prints. So I've got a green fabric with stars on it and then the yellow one with little chevrons. Oh, also I'm sticking with the space theme because that's the theme of the nursery. So anyway, with the two supporting prints that you're going to have, you are going to cut the width of these strips three and a half inches and for one of them you need four and the other one you only need two. So you can think about that maybe based off of if you're using fabrics you already have maybe you can just decide which ones which based off of how much material you have because it's not very much so you could probably uh, grab something from your stash and then you're going to need a separating fabric which I normally choose a solid or something a little bit darker so that it doesn't get lost with the other prints so I've just chosen this blue flannel um, because I thought that it just sort of broke up the brighter colors a little bit and for this fabric you need eight strips of the width of the fabric at two inches wide so eight eight strips at two inches two strips at three and a half inches four strips at three and a half inches and three strips at seven and a half inches now obviously based off of the picture that you'll be able to see at the beginning of the video, you could do more or less prints if you wanted, depending on the style that you wanted to go for. But this is what I'm going to be working with today. Okay, so this is basically going to be how the layout of the quilt is. So you're going to stop at, start at the very top with your main print. So that's the seven and a half inch piece. And then the skinny strip is going to go in between every single piece. So the pattern will always rotate with one of your skinnier strips. So it'll go the main one and then your uh, dark like in between fabric. And then the two supporting prints that you have will make like a little um, like a border almost so like two and then one in the middle so that's why with the one print you need four so it will sort of be like the main print of the supporting prints if that makes sense so there will be two of that print and then one in the middle of it and then that section will keep going alternating with the blue until you get to the next main print and this will basically mark the center of the quilt and obviously my table ends um, <laughs> but I will then lay out almost the exact same thing after this. So it'll go another blue strip and then the green strip, a blue strip, a yellow strip, and so on. So I'll make this little unit with the two supporting prints after this, and then the quilt will end in a final large um, print piece. Um, so this is your moment to understand the pattern and decide whether or not you wanna do something different with it. Um, you could also, um, when you remake this section at the bottom, you could flip it so you could have, for example, the yellow here and here and then the green one down the middle so that each one would be different. Or even if you wanted to use the same fabric, like 
if you just wanted to alternate like the blue and the green and make that the exact same, you could do that too. Or you could put um, another strip of the main print in the middle. If you wanted to showcase it a little bit more, you could do that as well. Um, so from here, um, once I finished cutting, I ironed all of the strips out. I laid them in the order that I want so that I don't have to think about it while I'm um, grabbing a strip and pinning. I don't have to think about which strip comes next. I just like to um, I'll probably start here and grab these two and pin them together, obviously pretty sides together, edges even at the top. Um, and I'm just going to be using the edge of my pressure foot to sew down each seam. You could use a quarter inch foot if that helps you with your sewing, but if you're comfortable um, maintaining that seam allowance and if you're more of an experienced sewer, you shouldn't have to use um, the quarter foot if you don't want. I'm also watching super vet while I do this. That's one of my new favorite shows right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm only on my second piece, but I just wanted to quickly um, say that as you're sewing them, I find it a lot easier to iron it as you go. So what I do is once I've sewn on the new piece, I then flip this up and then I just um, use the side of the iron to press that right up so that the seam is nice and crisp and it's opened. Um, I just find it easier to go along and do that and then it helps to ensure that all of your seams are being pressed in the same direction. It helps your quilt lie flatter um, and it just makes it easier to pin on the next piece as you're going. All right, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> so it's the next day now, so I guess I can't really call this quilt a quilt in a day because I started it last night and probably going to finish it sometime this morning. Um, I have coffee in hand. That's key. Um, wish it had Baileys in it, but too early for that. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this is what the quilt looks like now. So I've got all my strips together. I've ironed it. Obviously I was telling you um, that I prefer to iron it as I go so that all of my seams are facing the same direction. And then I'm going to be using this uh, light blue flannel with stars on it for the backing. So I've got that piece cut with the batting right there. And then my quilt on top and I've um, started to pin it. I'm going to put some more pins in it though, um, but I just wanted to uh, show you what the next step of it was. If you're new to quilting, you might find this part helpful. So this is going to be the part where you can do whatever you'd like. You can quilt this however you want. You can use some templates if you want to do something a little bit more fun. Um, you can use your free motion quilting foot to stipple it or meander it. Um, you can follow the seams. You could just stitch in the ditch of each of the seams. You could maybe draw some lines. You could do like so little chevrons in the big parts maybe. You can literally do whatever you want because there's no rules. So <laughs> that's a good spot to let your imagination run a little wild, especially because the quilt is so basic. For me, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. I'm not going to lie. Um, and one of my favorite ways to quilt this particular quilt pattern, because I've made so many of them, is to sew down each of the seams all the way across the quilt, but to use a zigzag stitch. So if you just make your zigzag a little longer and a little wider than it normally is, just because of the thickness that we're going through, and just run that right over the seam. So basically I usually tell people to have the seam going down the center of your pressure foot on your machine just so that it's equal. Um, the stitching will be equal on both sides. Um, I like that option for people who want to do the stitch in the ditch but maybe they're not too confident in their sewing to actually follow it um, very closely. Um, so it's just sort of a stress-free method and at this point I mean, it's for, hopefully, I mean, if you're making it for a gift or a child like I am, it's going to be loved and it's going to be washed and it's going to be used and dragged around. Um, so you just, you know, don't stress out about it. I'm not going to stress out about it. So this is just one of those times where basically the same, we're quilting it for the same reason that your duvets and your comforters from the store have lines in it. It's just to help keep everything nice and together when it's being washed and when it's being tumbled around in the dryer and stuff like that. So um, I'm just going to be sewing 
right across the lines for the sake of time and for the sake of putting quite a lot of quilting in it because the seams are actually quite close together as well. Um, and then I'm also probably going to be adding an initial to it. I did it on another quilt that I did recently and I really loved the look of it. I'll insert a picture of the one that I've done here. Uh, so I'm probably going to be adding um, the first letter of the baby's name in the bottom somewhere. I'll applique that on. But yeah, so I'm going to get quilting this and then I will update you when I'm done. Alright everybody, so it's been a couple days since I last updated this, but anyway, um, my quilt here is basically at a point where I've finished doing the stitching. Uh, if you can see here across each of the seams. So I've done that zigzag stitch like I mentioned I was going to do all the way across each one. Um, then once I finished that I trimmed all of the excess off so my backing and my batting are now all even with the quilt and that is because I'm going to be doing um, the type of binding where you hand stitch it. Um, if you wanted to machine um, bind your quilt. You could have left on any excess um, backing if you had the right amount of course and you could have done it that method. Um, I'm not going to include the instructions for the binding in this part because I feel like some people might already know that and that's a little redundant or it depends like for example if you wanted to do the machine binding I'm not going to be doing that so and I've cut it off so I have no way of actually showing that to you now but what I will do I think because my video is lacking it um, I'm going to film me doing the hand binding and upload it as a separate video so I will try to upload that part first so that when I edit and upload this video I will have the link to the way that I do hand binding down below because I know some people cut the strip a different size and have different tips and tri tricks and stuff like that but I'm sure that there are loads of videos already um, on how to bind so anyway the next step here would be to simply bind your quilt and then you would be finished but I did also just wanted to point out that I put um, the baby's first letter of his first name um, as a little machine applique here. Um, so I've just done it in black. I did use some steam -a seam um, under there too just to give it that more, um, I don't know, like how when you buy things in the store and when it's applique on it's a little bit stiffer like that. Um, so I just thought that helped give it some more body. Um, some people might hate it, might think it looks a little awkward, but I have noticed it as like a pretty big trend now that a lot of people are machine applying initials and uh, things like that on quilts. So it will probably look a lot nicer once it's bound and you can kind of see the whole thing all at once and it's not so like, you know, in your face or whatever. But I just thought that it helped to give it a little more of a personable touch, I guess, um, and I kind of like it, I'm a fan. So yeah, so after you bind this with the method of your choice, you are basically done. Um, of course, unless you wanted to add a little label on the back, which would be fantastic and I always forget to do things like that. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions about this at all, you can send me an email at quilters.workshop at gmail.com and you can follow me on all of my other social medias, which are always listed down below. And if you make one, I'd love for you to take me in the picture or send it to me in an email. I'd just love to see what you guys are creating. So thank you so much, and I'll see you really soon.